Okay, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to go in um, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Let me move this over here. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's exactly how I needed it. Oh, I did good that time. I usually have to fight to try to get my screens like I need them. I hit it the first time then. Thank you, God. It's the little things that matter so much. Matthew chapter 7, and I'm going to talk about effective communication. Father, I love you. I bless you. I honor you. I adore you. Thank you. Thank you for waking us up today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for clothing us in what we call a right mind. Sometimes I wonder how right it really is, though. But I want to thank you that you gave us, Father, the ability to serve you on today. You gave us the, the use and the activity of our limbs today. I want to thank you for that. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would be with the, the family and the friends of Kevin Burks today as they would um, prepare his body to lay it to rest. Father, I thank you that I spoke the, uh, the words over it last night to say, Father, from ashes to ashes, from dust to dust, God, that the body will return further unto the ground. But I pray the soul and the spirit found rest in you, God. And I thank you for those of us that yet remain for the healing process. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Now anoint us fresh with your word, Father. Anoint our ears to hear. Let us be able to hear what you are saying, Father, and be able to move among the things that you have, that you are giving to us, that we will be able to flow in essence of who you are and the things that you have set for us to do. God, I thank you for fresh revelation falling in the name of Jesus as we talk about communication, which is one of the things that we suffer the most with in the earth is the ability, is not the ability to love, but a lot of times it is the ability to communicate. We struggle with communication, God. We struggle and because of the lack of communication, it hinders the ability to be able to love. So Father, we thank you for anointing us fresh, anointing us fresh this morning. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen, amen, amen. All right, Sharika, make sure you handle and moderate things. If you don't mind, please. I, did I reclaim host or did I leave you? I usually try to leave you in there. I'm not sure what I did today. Let me um kind of check it and see. Um. Where? All right. So, okay. Um, hold on one second. And so, I don't want to. All right. No, that's not right. All right. So, let me grab this and put it where I need to. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on one second, y'all. Okay, so I need you to show video. And I need. Hold on, I got caught up here. It doesn't want to let me split my screen. Okay. Here we go. All right, so Matthew chapter 7 is where I'm going to go today. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to delve in and um, talk some more about effective communication. As y'all heard me say in the prayer where I was talking to the Lord, a lot of times that is the main issue that we have. Um, it's not even so much of... Um, it's not even so much of people uh, struggling with love and that type of stuff. A lot of times it is the ability, the inability to have effective communication, because if you don't have co effective communication, you're not going to understand things. You're going to misinterpret things. You're going to um, not have full details as it relates to things. It just entails a lot of a lot of stuff when there is no effective communication. Matthew chapter 7 is one of the texts that I chose this morning to use as it relates to this. So to be effective concerning something literally means that um, 
it produces, you know, it brings about a, the desired result is uh, obtained when it is effective. It has made a difference. It has hit the mark when there, when it is, that's the word effective and communication, which means to commune actually is the root word of communication and to commune literally means to become one with is what, um, is what communication, you know, communication mean. It means to become one with. So literally I am becoming one with this situation when there is effective communication. Again, effective communication to be effective means to, to obtain the desired result. It means to literally produce. It means to have the harvest of. It is effective. It means that it happens the way it needs to happen. Communication, root word it means commune to be one to literally to become entwined to be to become one with which means that when there is communion that is why when we take communion or partake of communion in service we are we are literally eating the lord's flesh and drinking the lord's blood the cup of blood so that literally means that we become one with christ it means that we are saying lord what you do i do what you say i say what you feel, I feel. What you think, I think. So that is literally what we're saying, that this is what I am doing. So it has to think about those two words together now, effective communication or effective commune. It literally means that the that what, what is desired is literally being produced now because of the oneness that takes place. So whenever there is communication happening, it needs to be effective because if it's not effective, then what it's going to do is it's literally going to leave so much confusion and it leaves opportunity for things to get in that should not um, be in. It will literally leave uh, space for uh, other things to be, you know, uh, inside of it to literally, it leaves space for, I'm going to say for us as humans, it leaves space for wandering. It leaves, um, space for assumptions. Some of those are, those can be some dangerous things with us as humans. The ability to be able to assume can be positive and it can be negative. And the ability to, you know, to, to assume can literally put us in a place where we think that's something and it may not even be there. There is a, a possibility that it is. There is a possibility that it's not uh, literally to be able to assume. Well, I have adopted this thing about me where I, you know, I have an issue. Don't think for me. I don't, you know, pretty, I don't pretty, you know, just ask me, you know, if you just ask me, I will tell you. But guess what that means? I want y'all to hear the other side of that. That means that I have to know how to be an effective communicator. If you do not want people to assume, then you have to know how to effective, com effectively communicate. Where there is a lot of assumptions, it's a, it, it, there, there is no effective communication. There is no effective communication where there is a lot of assumptions. You, you, you know, now listen, I'm going to need y'all to unmute. If anybody can understand and agree with what I just said, I'm going to need you to say something right there because... That right there was a boom. That right there. That right there. Can you understand what I just said? If there is a lot of assumptions in a place, there is no effective communication. There is no. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Takes up the wrong way, and you go half cocked. You're gonna always be, you know. If I got to assume, then that means there is no effective communication because I don't have to assume where we talk. I don't have to assume where we can communicate, where we commune with each other. I don't have to assume. I can literally just ask you. Because we 
talk. There is effective communication. And so in Matthew chapter 7 is where I'm going to use uh, my springboard on for Matthew chapter 7. I may deal with some more. And so we understand effective. I wanted y'all to get the definition of effective communication because I'm telling you with as much as you may not think that it is an issue, it's a real issue. I'm telling you, it is a real issue in the world itself. There are very few people, although um, talking is the very first thing that we learn to do, you know, and it is the main thing that we parents love to make sure that our kids do. The first thing that we say to when we meet people about their kids, are they talking yet? They, you know, oh, she's talking early or, oh, he's delayed in talking. See, because we understand the importance of talking because talking is literally going to allow us to be able to express if we know how to talk. God gave us the ability to be able to talk after him. He gave us that. So a lot of times when the scripture talks about us, him making us in his image and in his likeness, people tend to think that that has something to do with appearance. But it has a whole lot to do with ability to speak. That's what it has. It is 75% of it is about the ability to speak and the ability to communicate because God is a spirit, you know, and so <laughs> no man has literally seen him in the in the spirit form. We literally saw him in bodily form through Jesus to Christ and we see him through bodily form in ourselves as we house the spirit of God literally there was more about what God could say than more than how God looked so we have this issue of thinking that it is about, oh, we look like God. Well, what does his hair look like? And what does this look like? No, the power is in what God had the ability to be able to say because it is his words. It is when Jesus shows up, what you want him to do is to speak. When Jesus showed up and that boat was just tossing with tempests and the winds and the waves was beating all up on it, the disciples knew that within the ability of that one man, he wasn't going to be able to stop those waves, but his voice spoke and said, peace be still. And they stopped because why? It was in the ability to speak. It was in the voice. It was of the spirit that came out of him. It was the effective communication that the winds understood. So you literally got to know how to talk. You got to know how to talk, y'all. You got to know how to talk. You got to know how to talk. You got to know how to effective communicate. You got to know how. Do you know how many relationships are destroyed because of the inability to communicate? Listen, if you have a um, a child, and I had one, um, Justin, you know, a, 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 a.k.a. Fuzzy, Fuzzy or whatever, you know, so... Um, he did not talk until he was maybe five, you know, I, w I would say um, five. I remember my mama, you know, uh, hurting my feelings real bad about him, you know, saying like I need to get him tested and make sure he wasn't retarded, you know, because the first thing she said was, you know, it's retarded. Uh, it's some retardation in our family or whatever, because he just had a hard time talking. Now his mouth talked too much, you know. The mouth talks so much now, shoot, it it, it um be talking back to me, you know. So his mouth runs, you know, it, it, it talks so much now. There's not a stutter or anything in his voice now, baby. He he gets down and so in whenever you have someone that uh, you know, you know someone or you deal with someone. It's very good to get history on um, people when you deal with them. Uh, I know that you want to deal with them based on where they are, but a lot of, of where they are came from their history. It derived from the places that they had been. And so a lot of decisions were made about them. So it's very good to find out, you know, about people. So if you deal with, um, say, for instance, if you, you know, you, you deal with uh, kids or so and you have kids that literally have a, have trouble talking, they have trouble communicating. I can assure you that that lack of communication that they struggle with because they know they struggle with it because they know their voice doesn't sound like 
like the other kids are or they can hear when you know you 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 literally get it out what you trying to say they can see the frustration of what you know of you trying to understand them so it puts a insecurity on the inside of them that makes them want to shut down now what i want to show y'all is is that insecurity is now lodged on the inside and because it's lodged on the inside although they may um you know develop better words and all that part of them is still lodged in the inside of them that insecurity is still there based off the fact of what was deposited there so there's going to be times where um, things are going to happen to them to make them retreat back to that place just shut up they're not trying to listen to you anyway and especially if they can't talk in a way that they you know want to talk in a they can't get it out in a way that they're trying to get it out the first thing that's going to happen to them is they're going to retreat back to that struggle they're going to go back to that that place of confusion where they saw the face that made the expression to say what are you you trying to say thing you know they're going to go back because the mind revisits places no matter how much we you know renew the mind and all the mind has a tendency to review places that it's been hurt. It, it reviews places where there has been pain. If you really just take a moment and think, if I gave y'all just a few seconds to let you think, and you thought about it and was honest about it, you would literally see that your mind goes back to places of pain more than it goes to places of happiness. Every time something happened, the first place the mind is going to want to visit is that place where pain was. It's going to want to go there and literally try to build from that place because it seems as though it's much easier to build from that place than it is for, you know, to, to build from the happiness. Because what the mind says, if when it's comparing the two, the place of pain and the place of happiness, what the mind says is, is, is instead of it taking the happiness, it wants to always, well, you know, they did such and such. See, it always, well, you know, they just going to do what they always did. See, it wants to go to a place that it was familiar with. That's why the scripture encourages us so much to renew the mind. You have to renew the mind. Listen, let me talk to y'all real this morning. You need to hear me this morning morning with your spirit. Don't catch me in your mind now because your mind already flipping and tripping. You might want to tap into the spirit ram to hear me this morning. Listen, this is what has to happen. Anytime you take on something, I don't care what it is, whether it is a relationship, whether it is a new loan, whether it is um um you you get a new Bible or whatever it is that you take on for you to become one with, you might want to renew your mind. You, you you the first thing you want to do is to work on renewing your mind. You 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 better do something with it. Because if you get say you get a new Bible, I'm a King James Bible person, that's that's me. Um, but if I was to get a message Bible, let's just say, and I want to become one with this message Bible, everything going to come to me from the King James first, because that's what I was familiar with. That's what I was familiar with. If you ever want to know where you are in your life, think, watch your thoughts, watch your thoughts. If everything always comes negative, you, 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 you messed up. You messed up. Everything about you comes from a negative place. And you have to fight to pick up good things. You have to struggle to pick up good thoughts. You can't think nothing good about, uh, about people. Yeah, everything has a negative connotation to it. It's not so much that those people are negative. It is that you are negative And you have literally not renewed your mind. When your mind has not been renewed, it's literally going to always go back to places of familiarity familiarity. And what that means is, is that you are living walled in. That's what it means. It means that you are living your life caged in. You are locked in. You are not free. You are locked in literally because everything from a negative um, place comes from being caged up. Everything from a freedom place comes from a place of happiness. When there is real freedom, freedom gives you the ability to express. Yeah, it's real this morning, y'all. It's going to get more real, too. Freedom gives you the ability to express. 
you can't express in bondage. You can't. When you're in bondage, you are locked in to a particular place. You can't express. You, you, you have no expression when there is bondage. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You free. You free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so you literally have the ability to express. You have the freedom and you can move. And so what does effective communication have to do with me having freedom? Effective communication grants me the ability to be free because I am able to express. I'm able to release. Effective communication does. And so when you have someone, you find history, or if you just by paying attention to them, just from the time you, you're you with them, you realize that there is an inability to effectively communicate. That's something you need to start working on. Because it's going to always be problems where there is no ability to effectively communicate. There's going to always be issues. Not knowing to effectively communicate will always keep confusion around. Always. Why does it keep confusion around? I'm glad y'all want to know. Because you're always going to be assuming. Everything is going to be about an assumption. They move. Ah, I'm assuming they were going to go over there. Did you ask them where they're going to go over there? Well, I just assumed you didn't want no chicken. Did you ask me did I want some chicken? See, there is no effective communication. So there's always going to be assuming. I knew you were going to get mad about it. I'm not mad about it. See, you were assuming because there was no effective communication to ask the question. And so let's pick up some text. Let's get in some text. Matthew chapter seven. Let me see how I can make this work. I I, I haven't read ahead. I'm kind of a little familiar with the text, but um, because I've heard it before, but I'm not, I haven't read ahead to, but let's, so let's walk in this together to see. This is just what came in my thoughts as I was getting dressed this morning um, concerning this text. And I looked it up and it's in Matthew chapter seven. So Matthew chapter seven, um, And let's go to verse 24, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24 here. So this is the man himself talking. This is Jesus the Christ, the great I am, the wonderful counselor, the beautiful love of my life. This is him talking. And verse 24, he says, therefore, and I'm in the KJV, so you know, therefore, whosoever heareth, I love it, these sayings of mine, can y'all already see that is communication. That is communication right there. Therefore, whosoever heareth, which means there is communication because there is talking. He says, whosoever heareth these says of mine and doeth them. So wherever it produces effectiveness. Woo, Lord, I love you this morning, man. Let's ride like some horses this morning. Let's gallop through the land, God. Let's get it. He says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. Ooh, whosoever it is effective to. Woo, Lord, whosoever gets it like it needs to be got. Whosoever understands what I am saying, Jesus Christ, he says, and do with them because, listen, you're not going to do what you don't understand. Father, I wish you'd help me this morning. Holy Spirit, activate. Uh, listen, you're not going. That's why I don't like to mess with the Bible because it do something to me, boy. It just, woo, 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 woo. it just messes with me real bad. It it, it, do, it wakes something up in you, girl. It just, it, 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 this, this, this word is real to me. It's real in my soul, baby. It's whosoever hear it, these sayings. And I, I mean, it just gets me how it just goes through my head. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It, it, it give me so much understanding. Whosoever, listen, that's everybody. I'm talking to everybody the same way is what Jesus is saying. I ain't just picking out this crowd and that crowd. I'm talking to everybody. This word 
word is for the little people, the big people. This word is for the black people, the white people, the rich people, the poor people. This word is for everybody because whosoever hear it, these sayings of mine and do it them. Whosoever has effective communication, he says, I will liken him unto a wise man. Listen, 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 listen. Point number one, whenever there is effective communication, it gives wisdom. Father, help me, please. Holy Spirit, activate. It gives wisdom. Wherever there is effective communication, there is going to be wisdom. Okay, so you tell me, listen, uh uh-uh, definitely I'm going to teach you how to change the oil in the car. It ain't, I'm just making up something, y'all, because I hope I don't have to change no oil. I'm too cute to be down there trying to change anybody's oil. I'm just making up an example. Dennis Post must be out there working on my ice cream truck, and I done picked up on his spirit because I don't know where that come from about me changing no I'm too cute to get all that. I'm too cute about now. The only oil going to get on me is some blessed oil, but let's use that as an example. So if you're going to teach me how to change or, all right, so there has to be effective communication in order for me to do it. Listen to look what he said. He said, you have to hear the sayings, which means that I literally have to be open to you. I'm going to get in there today with y'all. Listen, you cannot hear a person you are not open to their thing. Okay, this girl is too early for this. You cannot hear... Uh, you're not going to hear from someone. You're not going to hear effectively from someone you close to. You ever been mad at somebody and they tried to talk to you? You ain't hear nothing. They got the thing. They could tell you, listen, don't go down that street right there because there's a pothole down that street and folks' cars is getting sunk in that pothole. I ain't nothing they got to say. You going on down that street and going to get in that pothole because you would not listen to them. There was no level of effective communication because you were closed off. And so Jesus literally says, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. He has a ETH at the end of the word do because he wants you to continuously do it. I don't want you to just hear me one time, but I need you to hear me all the time when I speak because when I speak, I'm going to be saying something of such quality that you're going to need it to continue to further the prospering of your life. Christ is not going to just talk to you one time. Christ wants to have a continuous conversation with us at all times to talk to us. So I need to talk to you today, Delphine. Today is March the 11th, 2023. Yesterday was March the 10th. What I said to you yesterday may not be effective for today, sweetheart. Yesterday you went to Geneva, then went to Dothan. Well, today you may go to Op. So there is a whole different journey. So I need to talk to you in the effectiveness of going to Op. I need to talk to you about what's going to happen in Op and how to move and maneuver in up. So I've got to continuously talk to you. He can't talk to you one time. He's got to continuously talk to you. And so let me help y'all understand. Let me put this plug because I just heard God. That is the reason why we are always continually growing. Every time there's going to be something where we have to continuously communicate about things. Why? Because we are ever changing. Oh, baby. We are ever changing, but what we don't want to is we don't want to be the people that are ever changing. But as uh, I want to say, it was Isaiah, the book of Isaiah said that they are ever learning, but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Woo, baby, 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 baby. Check this out right here. Ever learning, but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. That is someone that only hears from a shallow place of what they want to hear. They won't ever allow the truth of what is being spoken to be produced. They will only just shave off what they want to hear and won't listen to the depths of it. Can I tell y'all something about this Savior, uh, this Lord and Savior named Jesus the Christ? Can can I tell y'all something? I literally almost this morning, uh, but I didn't have time. If I had I had time, I was going to wow y'all today, baby, because I want to go into the Bible and pull all the parables and just literally show y'all the parables that Jesus talked about. 
about just to show y'all the simplicity of the parables and how much sense the parables made. And so Jesus, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's take the parable uh, uh, about the beam in the eye and the speck. Let's take that. Now, listen, Jesus says uh, you carried a beam in your eye, a beam. That's a big log, uh, this big beam inside of your eye. You're walking around with this beam coming out of your eye. Say it's the left eye. You got this big beam that's coming out of your eye. Everybody can see it when you show up. This big beam is coming out your eye. You only have visibility out of your right eye because the beam is in the left eye. And so you're going to take what is your eye, this one eye that you got left, that you got to live by, and you're going to use that one eye. Jesus, you're going to do this this morning. Yes, we is. Look, you, you're going to take this one good eye that you got left, and all you're going to do is pick out specks in other folks' eyes. <laughs> Wait, just that y'all see that? I won't kill them parables. I won't kill them parables. I'm going to kill them parables. I'm going to teach on them parables. I'm going to do a series on them parables just to show y'all how simplicity them parables was and literally see the revelation of what it was he was saying. You mean to tell me you got this big old beam coming out your eye and you can only see with this one side that's left, instead of you being, oh God, appreciative about this one side that's left, you want to try to find something. Oh God, help me this morning. Save me. I'm sorry if I've done that. I'm sorry if I've ever done that and doing it now. I'm sorry. You want to literally take that one beam, this one eye that you got, instead of you trying to see the beauty of what's what's in the world and being grateful for the fact that you can see, you want to go around picking out, hey, look at such and such got this, and look at such and such got this, and you dear man, go, 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 go sit down. Huh? Go, go, go sit down. That, those are the parables, but listen, when there is effective communication, when you understand the effectiveness of communication, you realize that Hey, listen, uh, I, I got this thorn in my flesh that uh, Satan uses to buffet me. Uh, this issue that I have, you know, I got, I got this problem, man. The thorn, the thorn that, that that Pastor Lee has is is you do Pastor Lee throw out my ass, you could say, you know, Lord help her. That's the thorn that's in her flesh, and Satan has uses it to buffet me. You know, that is that thing. And so when you understand that I got this thorn in my flesh, and because I got this thorn in my flesh. I don't have no oil, oh, Jesus Christ. It's getting hot in here. It's hot in here. They said I thought it was cool outside this morning. But look, I got this thorn in my flesh, but I want to mess with other folk about what they got going with. Really, really show me where that's God. Show me where that exemplifies the spirit of God, where that looks anything like Jesus to Christ. Jesus literally was saying to them, hey, look at here. Let me show y'all something. Uh, uh, when, when, um, when they were proud of even being able to cast out demons, Jesus rebuked them about it. He says, listen, you are not to even be rejoicing about the fact that you can cast out demons, that Satan knows who you are, but you need to be rejoicing because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what you want to throw a party about. You don't want to throw a party about the fact that you ain't doing this and they doing that. and You ain't doing that and they doing this. You don't want to throw no party about that. You want to throw a party about the fact that I've been changed. You want to throw a party about the fact that uh, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Uh, write my name on the roll because I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. Oh, I want to be ready when Jesus come. You want to literally uh, throw a party and rejoice about that. You don't want to throw a party about the fact that I can talk about what they doing, but can't talk about what I'm doing. No, he says, look, you want to be careful about that. So Jesus all throughout the text of where he, in the gospels of where he, he triumphantly moved through the earth. He literally was talking about the facts of effective communication. You see at 12 years old, when they couldn't find him, he was inside of the synagogue teaching. He was inside using effective communication. He literally took 
the scroll and went into the place of Isaiah. Isaiah is how they pronounce it. And But we say Isaiah. He goes in to the book of Isaiah and he goes in and literally shows them exactly what was going on and says today has this scripture been fulfilled in your ear. Now because Lord help me this morning. You're going to use your servant like this today God. Uh -huh, they didn't think I could do any of this didn't they? They thought I would. I played with it. But baby I oh baby I hit it, not babysit it. Check it out. Jesus goes in and hits them with effective communication. How is it effective? He says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your ear and they missed it. They literally missed it. Why? Because it was not what they wanted to hear. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You gonna miss it whenever communication is given and it's not effective when you don't want to hear it. When you literally condition yourself to be a particular way and it has to be that way, you're going to miss it. Can I tell y'all something about this Lord and Savior? Just one more secret about him. Jesus doesn't talk from the realm of where we are. Oh, oh, you, you may need to just let that sit with you for a second. I mean, let y'all let that sit with you just for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab some of Miss Alice's sweet tea. I had to add water to this woman, Noah TV sweet. Listen, I'm going to let you sit with that one. Jesus does not talk from the ram of where we are. Jesus does not talk from the ram of where we are. Just so you understand that. I'll make it plain to me, Pastor Lee. Give me a second. I'm coming. I'm trying to let y'all, I'm trying to let that sit in with you. Jesus does not talk from the realm of where you are. You cannot talk to someone that is in the mind of Christ and think it's going to come from the level of where you are. That ain't going to ever happen. That ain't going to ever happen. Them jokers, let me show you what I'm talking about. Them jokers take Jesus to a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. Said she was caught in the midst of it. Woo, I'm hoping not to be her no time soon. They, they it catches her right in the midst of the, the very act of adultery. And they say to him, what you going to do about this? She was stroking with the motion. Baby, we caught her. Yeah, we caught her, baby. We caught her right in the midst of it, you know, had the song playing in the background. I used to hang out every night, running around in the club. They had that playing in the background. They done caught him right in the act, right in the act of it. Take her to Jesus and what you going to do about it? And the scripture said, Jesus began to write in the sand, ignored them. Why? Because he ain't on that level. He ain't on that level ignored them. So then they began to pester him because they want to him want him to speak from the level of where they are. Anytime you are dealing with God, anytime you are dealing with someone that has the spirit of God, they, they're not going to talk to you from that level. Listen, anytime you are getting counseling, they're not going to talk to you from that level. Counseling does not come from the level of which you're on. Counseling has to come from a higher level because it has to bring you up. If you are talking to me from the same level that I'm on, then I'm not going to develop. I'm going to still be thinking the same way I was thinking when I walked in. You have to talk from another level. And so you have to understand whenever there is counseling that is taking place, you have to be open to progress because that's what counseling, counseling pulls you up. It, it causes you to progress. That is the reason you desire to be counseled because you are looking to progress. If you want it from the same level, then you need to get your peers and your peers are messing around and have you in trouble because they cannot speak from a, a from that, uh, from a different level, they're going to say, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, that's right, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, now you, you should have did that, uh-huh, honey, that's exactly what went down, see, they speak it from that level right there, and they're going to keep you locked in that place, but when you go to sit and have real counseling, and you want to have, it, uh, 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 or you want to have spiritual counseling for real, and you're looking for wisdom, then what you're going to do is it's going to pull from a higher place, and so what it's going to do is, is it's going to literally talk to you from another realm. It's going to talk to you from a place of pulling you from where you are to another place. So it's going to literally say, okay, well, why did you do that right there? You did that because of such and such, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Well, you may have that covered up and you don't, you know, you got that head, don't want that to be revealed that that's why you did that like that. But the counseling is going to pull it from that place because the counseling sees that that is the issue. All you want to talk about is the fact that you got 
a sore, but the counselor, the counselor wants to talk about the reason the sore is there. Okay, so you got the sore because you went in there and touched the hot stove, but all you want to talk about is my skin is burnt. But listen, why is your skin burnt though? You know, what happened for your skin to be burnt? Let's talk about that spirit of disobedience that you got. Why? Because you had been told to leave that stove alone, but you still wanted to mess with the stove. So if the counselor does not get to, to the root of the cause, which is the disobedience, guess what's going to happen? The counselor is only going to help you heal that womb, and you're going to go do it again. I'm going to get out of here, y'all. Listen, I, I'm going to have to let y'all go. Y'all ain't going to choke me this morning. I, I got too much stuff to do today. You ain't going to mess me up this morning. This stuff is heavy on me. This stuff be messing with me. Really? Ooh, that's why I can oh, that's why I can't hardly mess with this, this stuff. It, 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 this stuff be in my brain, man. It, 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 the counselor got to talk to you from a whole nother place because they got to bring that out. They need to pluck the root of the situation out because if we get the root of the situation out, we won't have to continuously have the same kind of conversations. We'll talk about things as we evolve because there's always going to be things that come about with the more we evolve, but we won't have to keep dealing with that same thing. You won't go back over there and be burnt again if we get to the root of it. So when Jesus talk. Did Jesus go back to where I was? Uh, Jesus began to write in the sand and they say to him, man, don't you see what we, we done bought this woman to you? Because see, we love to be able to expose folks for the wrong that they do. Yeah, we like that. Mm Mm-hmm. We like that. And we really want to expose folk to people uh, that we think believe in them. We really want to expose them to them because I want to show you just what you you think about her. See, they probably had saw Jesus talking to the lady prior to the fact of exposing her. And see, what Jesus was doing was, what Jesus was doing was, Jesus already knew the woman had issues but because he was Jesus and love past issues, uh, somebody better pray this morning for me. I'm telling you, because Jesus loved issue. He, he loved her beyond the issues that she had. He already knew she was shucking and jiving, but he needed a way into her because he wanted to change her life. Uh, he just needed a way in. When you wise, he kind of One of the first scriptures I ever learned was he that winning souls is wise. See, a lot of y'all ain't winning nobody to God because you ain't got no wisdom. That's why you don't produce no fruit. You don't have no wisdom. See, you 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 you, you don't even know how to talk to people. You get caught up in conversations that you don't need to get caught up in. Instead of you literally being an agent of change in it, you literally go to start talking with it. And so you don't know how to effectively witness in order to bring souls. But Jesus was so wise. He done already saw her before they could bring her. I just believe this in there. I, I just believe that. He already knew knew what time it was with her. Why would he know? Because the man was fully God and fully man. He wasn't dumb. He know what's going on. Anybody that got God ain't dumb. They know what's going on. Literally so he sees this and they bring her. He starts writing in the sand. He's already saw the issue that the woman was struggling with. He already knew that she had a problem with going to bed, you know, because she had been lonely and she had literally wanted someone. So she found herself caught up uh, and she had done made this mess, made this mess and they caught her. So they bring her because they always want to show somebody up. When people's heart is not right towards another person, they always want to show them up, period. That's just how it is with us. When the nature of the heart ain't right, we don't cover. Oh, baby, 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 baby. They're, oh, Jesus, you either going to be a coverer or a revealer. That's what we going to be. Either you going to cover folk or you going to bust folk. Point blank, period. That's what we going to be. And so they were busters. So let's just call them busted, busted, busted. They wanted to make sure that they busted her. That's what they want. So they brought her to him to show him what she was doing. But his grace was so sufficient because he loved her just like he loved them. He's writing in the sand, ain't paying a bit of attention to them. And so they bring, they, they, they start being harsh about it. Don't you see what she done? Jesus says, well, listen here, um, um, uh, uh, um, listen, is there any among you that is free of sin? If so, 
I'm going to let you cast the first stone at them. You, whichever one of you that is free of sin, you go ahead, you know, stone her to death. I give you permission to stone her to death. Scripture said them jokers left. They had to drop them stones because they couldn't do anything. Why? Because they were wrong. They had things going on inside of them. I've literally watched this in my life. And I did this is something that this is free that I'm gonna give y'all. If your hands ain't clean, leave other folk alone. That's why you don't catch me messing with folk. Cause I know I might not be smoking. I might not be, you know, out clubbing. I may not even be out having sex and all. But that ain't the only thing that makes up sin. That's not the only thing that can separate from God. If you have anything about you that can separate you from God, leave folk alone. Leave folk alone. Please show mercy. Jesus, because of his ability to love, Wanted to show her love rather than stone her. Can I get that, that y'all, y'all, Lord, help me, help me today, God. That's what you do. Whenever you want to see change in a person, it has to come through love. That iron fist ain't going to get it. It's not going to get it. It has to come through love because love covered a multitude of faults. Oh, we, 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 we ain't Christians for real. We ain't Christians for real. We ain't Christians for real. Love covered a multitude of fault. Love does. Jesus knew that I need to love this woman. Now, I'm going to go again. I'm going to spin the corner again. Watch this. The woman at the well. Something about the fact of it being a woman. I about cried just then. Because of us being the weaker vessels and not really knowing how to live out here on our own because we're supposed to be covered. We're supposed to be covered. There is supposed to be an atom that covers these women. We're in some situations. But God loved him. I just hung a women's comfort message right there that somebody can get. You can have it. I just hung a women's comfort message. I told y'all, I knew I was supposed to do two meetings this month. And I'm trying to find it where I can do them. I wish people would get with me. I can help them. I can help them. They're sleeping on it. Second woman, woman at the well, she's uncovered. She's uncovered. Jesus covers her. Jesus says to her, he says, where's your husband? She says, I don't have one. He said, well, you've had five. Five men have left you uncovered. And you literally think that she's going to be, I'm finna go, y'all. To a man. How you going to have a woman? That's got history. And you know some of her history. And where she's been left uncovered and you think she's all put together. I'm all, I'm, I'm, I wish somebody would pray for me. I swear to God, I've never seen that to this morning. The revelation of it. I can't. How you gonna think she gonna be put together? 
All these jokers done left her uncovered. It wasn't until she met Jesus. So if you want her whole, get the woman to Jesus. It wasn't even anything that a man could do. It was what Jesus had to do. Jesus said, you've had five and the one you with now is not yours. Why? Because he ain't coming. But I loved you so much that I had to go through Samaria to meet you at the well. You got a woman they want to stone. And then you got a woman that they've dogged out. Neither one of them covered. And it took Jesus for them. It's hurting women out here. Effective communication. Effective communication. I ain't been able to do but one scripture. I, I'm sorry, y'all. All I read was one scripture. Matthew 7, verse 24. Those, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, I'm saying that to y'all this morning through the Holy Spirit. If you hear the Lord this morning and you do it, he says, I will liken him unto a wise man. God will bless you with wisdom. Which built his house upon a rock. He built his house upon a rock. Effective communication will secure your foundation. Having effective communication, God help me, will secure your foundation. You got a shaky foundation. It's because the communication ain't good. It's a whole lot of talking, but it's not effective. It's a whole lot of jabbing, but it's not effective. It's a whole lot of talking, and maybe even in other places, but it's not effective where it needs to be. It needs to be within, but it's without. The effectiveness. Let me open up for comments and questions. Any questions? Any questions or any comments? You have to unmute yourself. Any questions or any comments? Thank you for just reiterating, reiterating things and bringing it to the forefront because I do know this for me that that is something that I needed. Amen. Me too. I, it's much needed in its own time. Thank you, Apostle. Love you much. Thank you. Any questions? Anybody got any questions or anybody got anything you need to, uh, you want to express about it? Do I need to help you anymore? This is open form, just so you know. Um, you don't have to be afraid to talk on this. When you're with me, you don't have to be afraid to talk. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, just wanted to say, as always, it's a uh, on time word. I need it, and I'm quite sure some others did. It's something that I can definitely uh relate to, reflect on, and definitely move forward more effectively. And I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word. Amen. I got home, you know, um, at this place about them women. 
that that was heavy. That was really heavy. Yes, it is. I did. I got hung at that place about the way. Amen. Amen. Like you say, the revelation of it is just leaves us all in awe. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. It also gives clarification of what the Bible says, you know, what um, men are to love the husband as Christ did and Christ died for the church. How do you know that's him? Or how do you know that man is the one? Is because that man is really going to be that edge of protection. She's not going to be left vulnerable, you know, taking advantage of mishandled. Um, because as you said, we do need that covering. And a lot of our first coverings, which was our parents, were absent, you know, in whatever lifestyle or traumas they themselves. She was, Sharika, you went on mute and lost you. Uh, y'all you know what I said. Uh, you stopped at the, the trauma <laughs> um, of what the parents faced and it went out. No, that was pretty much it. You know, like, you know, just thinking about, you know, different things that I experienced as a child and like going back and revisit, you know, why do I operate the way I operate? You know, um, the different traumas and understanding, you know, like, um, you know, looking for that protection and that security and different things like that. And people, our parents were our first, you know, caretakers in that nature. And for whatever traumas and different things that they experienced or lifestyles they had at that time and different things like that, they weren't able to provide that. So we as women have to find our way back to, or not back to, but because we're, you know, the spirit was already there, but in the natural back to that place of covering with God and learning how to trust those that God is setting parameters with our life. And quite frankly, it is a little nerve breaking for me, I'll say, needless to say, because, you know, the people I've realized over the last week, you know, the people I should have been able to confide in, I wasn't. And so, you know, just feeling like, um, uh, what's the word? I don't want to say abandoned, but for lack of a better word, just out there, you know, um, uncovered in so many ways, which leads into some of the actions and different things that I took besides, you know, generational um, and social pressure and stuff like that that occurred. So it's literally like a time travel for me so God can go back and allowing God to deal with me in those so I can move forward as another. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Now I'm going to have to leave y'all on this one. The woman is to be a reflection of the man. Not the man a reflection of the woman. That's a house out of order. The woman is to be a reflection of the man. Prove it to me, Pastor Lee. All right. When he created her, he presented her to Adam, and Adam said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Adam gave her her identity. God didn't. Adam gave it to her. Adam gave her her identity. God didn't. And so, when the serpent came, he went to her. And he went to her because she was classified as the weaker vessel. So he's always going to come to the weakest point. He's always going to come to the weakest point. To try to wreak havoc. But if Adam's heart and his nature is intact, he'll know how to cover. 
he'll know how to protect. One of the things that I've seen the most with with married couples is the enemy can get in and mostly it's not so much of him getting in through the woman. He gets to get in through the man. Because the man won't let his heart be right towards the woman. It's only so much fight a woman has. She's a weaker vessel. Now, if she can put up dukes and all that, y'all think about it. When you see women and women, women that just really be dog fighting, what do we say? That woman fight like a what? Somebody answer. Dukes like a man. That's right. That's right. Because that's not our nature. That's not the intent. It's his nature to cover. Oh, man. Even with you saying that, it's like, um, I remember you talking to me about this a while back. You said, Toya, you're going to have to go through a healing process. And one thing that, you know, when I get, get to those places where I feel like, golly, I'm tired of fighting. It's literally like you. I, I see myself like throwing up my hands and be like, man, I'm just tired. And even with you saying that, it's like, if you feel protected, then you don't have to fight. But also I have to allow myself to get protected, to get in that place to allow somebody to protect me. Because when you sit there, even with you saying that is, you, when people say, man, that girl fight like a man, even when I would fight, it was like, man, I don't really want to do this. Because it's not really what you built to do, but you feel like that's the only thing. And even when I was little, my dad said, y'all better fight. Don't you let nobody run over you. And really, is it really running over you? It's like lack of knowledge in so many areas that you don't talk about. It's just you go off of what you told. And as an adult, when you go through different things, it's like literally like I can see myself changing in different areas. But then when I get to that point, it's like, even like in this transitional stage that I'm in now, as I'm moving, it's like, you want to fight, but you know, that's not going to help. You know, that's not going to change anything. So it makes you realize that you have to fight in a different manner, but really that part of you that hasn't healed and allowed different things to take place and even not even know how to talk or say it in the right form so the other person can hear you, it'll put you in a place. So just you just saying effective communication, because a lot of times we think we're talking, but we're really not being effective. You're just running your mouth because you're in an emotional place or you're trying to get out of a particular place you're in, but really you're not talking effectively. You're Mm -hmm. not talking with that person. You're talking at that person. And if you really haven't been taught or allowed somebody to come in as a mediator in those counseling places to say, hey, look, this is what you say. What, mm-hmm. what does that sound like when I say it to you? Because in the midst of different things that we deal with in life, you don't be thinking about that. Like how they come out and they you one of the ones like you sit back and say, oh, man, I said that. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it's already done. You didn't come. Mm-hmm. So just listening and going through and like say, hey, take a step back. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, it's okay to breathe and say, wait a minute, give me a second. Before Mm -hmm. you say something, that will put you in a different place. Mm -hmm. And just trying to, I I haven't mastered it, but I'm learning it and I'm walking through it. And it's like, oh girl, your mouth slick. You, you, that that was, that, that wasn't right. Yeah, you, it reminds me of what people say, you have good intentions, but it ain't, it ain't come across that way. Mm Mm-hmm. So check this out. Who did God, when he gave the curses in Genesis 3, who did God curse first? Woman. Somebody else take a shot at it. Who did God curse first? I'm just guessing, Adam? Yeah. I mean, Adam. He sweated his brow. 
God, who ate the fruit first? The woman. The woman ate the fruit and first. And then she took it to him. The woman ate the fruit first, but the man got cursed first. Because he wasn't covering. All right. Teach us. Amen. You know, with you saying that, um, Daniel asked me about that the other day. He said, he was asking something about if you, if we did something. That's right, Christine. Um, if I did something or he did something, if something was out of whack, if, do I think that everybody in the circle, I don't know exactly how he said it, but it was to the point of if he did something with the whole house or if I did something with everybody suffered from it. And I said, yeah, it's like a ripple effect. He was like, no, I think it's just an individual thing. I said, I ain't no way, ain't especially no way. when you covenant connected. There's no way. That I won't feel something that you did. I said it's just like one of our children. They go out and rob the blame. They did it, but everybody in the house can feel it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You gonna feel it to some caliber. If it ain't nothing besides <laughs> coming up to Daniel, you know, you know your sister robbed the bank. He get frustrated, or aggravated. It's gonna affect us because we're gonna have to go out and find somebody to give us the means, a lawyer, whatever the case may be, because we got to be there as a place to, for somebody to go in and represent her. I said, so everybody will be affected. We might not be affected as much as she, but we will be affected. He's like, I don't think so. But it's just the mind frame of how we think about this. Mm -hmm. And the perspective of Well, if you're thinking from a carnal, if you're thinking from a carnal place, you ain't gonna think so, but that's a real dangerous place to be. That's a real dangerous place when you when you you know you 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 hit you you take authority over that. You need to take authority over that right now, and I can tell you because that right there is enough for the enemy to tear your house down. Just because of a, of a, of a husband thinking single minded, ain't good, ain't good, ain't good. It's an automatic indicator. That's why I want y'all to pay attention to words. Listen to people when they talk. Words are locators. They will tell you where they where where we are. They're locators. It has been seen, y'all have seen movies where people would be being held hostage and it would be certain kind of words they would use and all that would give ideas of where they are to be able to find them because words are locators. They're locators. Eve ate of the fruit. The serpent knew who to go to because she was the weaker vessel. She was taken from man. So she didn't have, although we have two eyes, two ears, two legs, we have all of the components that it's, that a man has. There are still certain things we don't have that a man has. And that's the area that Satan started messing with. The part that we don't have. See, there are certain parts of you that has to be covered. There are certain parts of you as a woman that has to be covered. It has to be. The vagina is inside because it has to be covered. Why? Because it housed so many emotions. That is the place of climax. Emotion. If he hit you right, you gone. You gone. You gone. That's the reason it's not good, you know, for him to, you, everybody can't know the spot. Because if he hit you right, you gone. You gone. You done left Earth. You in orbit. It's internal because it houses emotion. So check, think about it when it comes to intimacy. He's external, you're internal. His external goes into your external. It's supposed to be his external, not Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike's. But it's supposed to be his external that gets in. Because it is an entrance for him. He's supposed to be that covering. 
So when those things, the, the Satan in the form of the serpent goes to her because she's the weaker vessel. He hit the places of her that her Adam, her husband, was supposed to have covered. When you look into it, I hear the Holy Spirit talking to me. I'm in a place right now, y'all. I'm in a zone right now, man. I'm in a zone right now. When he goes and talks to her, the first thing he questions is, is what the Lord said. Because Adam was supposed to have secured her in what God said. Adam was supposed to secure her. Christine, you were right. Adam was given the mandate. So Adam was supposed to have secured his house in what God said. That's why a man has to have a relationship with God if he's going to effectively lead. Check out houses that a man doesn't have a relationship with God. That woman crazy and wild and not dominating everything. She doing whatever. She ain't hearing nothing. She ain't, hey, I'm, I'm every woman. It's all in me. I'm Miss Independent. You know, see? So, Adam, she doesn't have the ability to. Even as a single woman, you're still looking for a covering. Do y'all know that God is my covering? I'm single, but I still have a covering. That God is my covering. Do you know that I have to, I, I pray you know, anytime I need something, if something is going on, do you know I talk to God? God is my covering. It's just a natural reaction from a woman to have to have a covering. But now when it comes to a man, before he goes to God, he's going to go try to find it himself. You know why? Because God gave him everything when he was in the garden. Everything was sufficient right there for whatever he needed to take care of his family and for things to be suffice. So the first thing that a man is going to do is, I'm feeling good out here and get it myself. You know, he's going to go take a second job if he got to. He's going to go, he's going to do. He's coming up with something. That's the reason why when a when it's a real man and he feel like he can't tar, he can't, he, he can't till the soil, and he can't cause some things to happen. It messes with him. It messes with him. If you got a dude and and there is a lack in the house and it ain't bothering him, you ain't got no man. You ain't got no man. I'm sorry. But you ain't got no man. It's going to bother a man. His first thought is the initial thought of, I, you know, because see, God gave him everything. God gave Adam everything, not their thing. Their thing. God gave Adam everything in that garden. Everything. He gave him dominion and all, everything in that garden. So whenever something happens, Adam is automatically going to the garden to look for it. He's going to literally, I got to find this in order to make this happen. Whatever I got to do, I may have to kill one of these calves and sell it. Whatever I got to do, I, you know, I may have to plant a garden over, you know, grab some of these turnips and or whatever the case may be. A man is going to pursue after that to make it happen. If he sees he can't get it done, then a man will go to God. Father, come here. Well, a little short, you know what I'm saying? I got some issues going here. But he has a hard time even in going to God in that aspect because his nature to be a man, because he understands when God put him there, God gave him everything. God follows up with a man to check with a man to make sure that the man is taken care of and is literally handling business like he needs to. God doesn't micromanage. That is the reason why he only would show up with them in the cool of the day. He wasn't there all the time because he said, look, I gave this to you for you to be able to handle things. I'm going to stop by to make sure that things is flowing like they need to. I don't have to micromanage. 
So before a man has counsel with God, he's going to counsel with himself regarding the things that God has given him. And that is the fight that he will be in. So you will literally see him struggling within himself fighting because he knows that God has given me dominion. I need to find this man. There's got to be and I got to do something. I can't. I can't just let this be like this. And so then you'll start seeing the attitude in him shift. You'll start seeing him. He'll be uncomfortable. Why? Because he feels as though he can't do what he was put there to do. He can. So then, Eve, where you at? I got you, baby. I got you. I got you. Because when God gave me to you, one of the things that he said was, that I would help you meet. So I got you. I got you. Until you can get the next instruction, I got you. So what Satan done, what Satan saw, that she would be the easiest one to get to. Adam does not stand up like he needs to. Adam gets the curse first. But to answer your question again, Toya, you were right in what you said. It affects everybody. Because when Adam got cursed, God stopped at Eve and cursed her too. And then literally cursed the ground, which means he cursed the house. So yes, it does affect everything. Your decisions can ruin your life. My decisions can ruin my life if they're not right. Making wrong decisions will tear your whole life up, y'all. I'm scared. I don't want to make none. I don't want to make bad decisions. God, please, please let me be in a place of wisdom. I'm scared. I'm scared. Because it can ruin your entire life, man. Just one wrong move. Just, you know, thinking on your own, stepping out there on your own can literally ruin your whole life. You can ruin it. Because, see, it depends on how far you get out there as to whether you could come back. I've seen people literally make some silly decisions and step out and, and man, they mess around and get so far out there. You know, I can't feel nothing. I can't, you know, all this kind of stuff. I just don't hear God no man. I can't do it. I can't do it. I need to feel God. I need to hear God. I, I that's all I got. That's all that thing got. I, I I can't. I can't. I need to hear him. I need to be able to be governed by him. You know, I need I need the things that he howls. He houses peace. He houses joy. He houses prosperity. He houses hope. He houses life. He houses godliness. He houses a, a mental st stability, emotional stability. He houses favor. He houses love. He houses comfort. I need those things in order to, to make it day to day. With everything that's going on in life, I need those things. I can't afford to drift. I can't. I can't. Ladies, one, we need to know our positions. Two, we need to heal in those positions. We need to know our positions and we need to heal in those positions. To my wives, pray about your homes, please. Please. Call your man, you know, you call your men into their right, right place. Call them into it. Father, you created him for purpose and destiny, and therefore I call him a king. Go as far as what Sarah did for Abram. She called him Lord, the Bible says. I call him Lord, God. He's king here. He's Lord here. He is the man here. 
he is. Speak his existence of creation. Speak that. I call him the first Adam, God. The one that you gave dominion and authority over the beast and the fowls of the air, Father. I call him to that position as king. It's what I call him. And the second Adam shall live in him as well because the second Adam was the Adam that produced obedience. Where the first Adam fell, the second Adam came through with obedience. Speak that over him so he's able to stand up in it. To my women, I pray healing over us today. Healing in every aspect of our life. Healing. Healing. Healing in breakthroughs. Healing in deliverances. Healing in prosperity. Healing in favor. Healing in joy. Healing in hope. I pray that over us today. I pray that in Jesus' name. Learn to communicate effectively. Talk about it. Everything you're running from, you're running because you don't feel like you can effectively communicate about it. Talk about it, though. Talk about it. In Jesus' name. Any questions, any comments before we get out of here? Amen. Apostle, you talking on something, Uncle Judge, our late Uncle Judge, he said this. He told us, me and Barbara, Gloria, Nidavon, he told us one Sunday, I think it was the last time he was here, he told us one Sunday, he said, come here, my nieces. He said, I'm going to tell y'all something. He said, my sisters, he said, Alice is the only one that's really living her life. He said, don't let nobody put boundaries on you where you ain't free. You've been preaching on this and it hit my spirit to tell you that Uncle Judge called you first. He said, now Alice got some girls, he said, but they're going to live just like she's living. Alice ain't letting nobody hold her. Down. She ain't letting nothing hold her. She lived freely. He said, locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. She ain't moved forward from Jane. Ali ain't moved forward from Clemmerly. He said, don't let that lock y'all in and lock y'all up. He said, those boundaries they put on their own life. He begged us. He had water in his eyes. He said, y'all live and enjoy life. Mm -hmm. He he, he said, man. Mm -hmm. Thank Jesus. That thing, that horse is about to overtake me this morning because where you at is the exact thing he said. He looked us dead in the eye. He said, y'all husband or y'all men might not be the way y'all daddy was. He said, but if y'all listen to your mama. He said, niece, please, I beg y'all. He said, live, enjoy your life. He said, if you run up on some snails, he said, get up. He said, hook up with somebody that can help you through it. He said, oh, man. Amen. Oh, God. Amen. Amen. I'm in a place right now, y'all. Anybody else? I'm in a place. Any other questions or any comments? Thank you, Uncle George. (laughs) Father, I love you this morning. I give praise, glory, and honor to you just for who you are, for the things that you do. I find myself overwhelmed at times with you. 
because I'm just so in awe of you. I can hardly express the things that you're speaking to me. Sometimes it seems like it's more than I can handle. But I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for the people that you give me a voice for. That you've taken my voice and you've allowed it to penetrate within the hearts of people. To make a difference in their life. It's nothing I take for granted. I pray that they can have it at an even greater level than I have it. And it's heavy on me. But I want to thank you for revelation of your word and understanding of how to be successful in life and godliness. I want to thank you for realizing that you're the top dog. And without you, there is nothing we can do. Everything derives from you. And it evolves around you. Thank you. I pray for the healing of women. In the earth. For all women. All females. Even those that are carrying themselves as studs. But they're females. Because that was the original intent. I pray for the healing in the land. For the wholeness to come. And the rebirthing of the woman to find its way into the earth. The rebirthing of the woman. And I pray for the men to gain the strength to cover and to protect the woman. I defy all the odds that are coming against us as our sexuality to cause women to desire to be men and men to desire to be women, I come against that in the name of Jesus. And I call for the original intent of what you desired for it to be within the earth, that it returns powerfully within the earth. I pray for marriages to begin to come forth between female and male. I pray for marriages that are already taking place to be restored, to be revived, to be rekindled. I pray for the emancipation of both women and men and the liberty of what you and who you can, who you created us to be. Emancipate, bring freedom where there is bondage. In the name of Jesus. I thank you. Healing in the land. Healing in the land. Healing in the land. I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. May the blood cover every one of us that are under the sound of my voice so that the enemy does not attack us for that which we have gained today. And I pray that it is written upon the tablets of our hearts that we may not sin against you. I pray that we do not rebuttal and fight against that that you have spoken, but that our spirits have yielded to and submitted to that that you have instructed and that that you have illuminated within us on today. I call for life and godliness over every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And listen, I love y'all. Um, I'm in a place. I, <laughs> I've been trying to figure out, you know, I felt like I needed to do some women's meeting this month, but I, I, I can't figure out when. I, you know, I thought about the end of the month. I, I I can't. I, maybe it's like this that I'm supposed to do it. Um, you know, maybe this is the floor that I'm supposed to use to do it. I'm not sure. If it is, fine. You know, 
Maybe this is that. I don't know. I could use some prayer from y'all concerning what it is that I'm, you know, because I have a lot I need to release for, for us. I have it for men as well. Because if men would listen to the counsel that women get, it'll help them to understand us. So it's for male and female. But um, I just know that I house it. That's all I can tell y'all is I house it. And I need to, um, it needs to be gleaned. It's time. It's time. So y'all pray for me, you know, that I can do what God got for me to do. And release like I need to release. Wow. I love y'all. Oh, I call you champions and winners, regardless of what you call yourself. I call you champions and winners. And may you excel in all that you put your hands to. And may you always keep continuing to lean on God's everlasting oh. Well, until the next time, I plan to be in the building tomorrow for those of you that are local. For those of you that are not local, you can always join us on Zoom. We'll have it open. If it's not open at 11, usually I think they try to have it open, um, you know, even for pre-service prayer. You'll be able to uh, to join in. Sometimes we miss the ball, just forgive us. But it'll be open. For you to be able to join in. So. Um, should any of you desire to be a blessing today. To sow a seed on the word. You can always send it to me. At um, I, my cash app is Pastor Delphine Lee. Just my name. And with Pastor in front of it. Pastor Delphine Lee. You can be a blessing. Should you desire to. Make sure you name your seed. Seal it. Seal it. Put a name on it. Put a name on it. Don't release it without naming it. So when the harvest comes up, you're able to say, yeah, that's it right now. So make sure that you do that. So it's Pastor Delphine Lee, if you desire to be a blessing in any capacity. I love y'all. Thank you so much. Go about your day and do what you do. I'm about to go about my probably cry a little bit more. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'll catch y'all later. Look at y'all still sitting in there. What y'all want to talk about? I see you still here. What y'all want to talk about? I don't even know if I want to talk. It's just being in the prayers. Y'all still. You know, I'm like praying. Somebody say something. Anybody, look up and y'all still him. What y'all want to say? What you want to talk Love about? What you want to say? Somebody want to say something? What you want to talk about? Ask me a question. What you want to talk about? Ask me. Tell me. You mad at me? You love me? What you want to do? Like me, it's just sitting in the atmosphere for me. I've been noticing like that, that the last days I've been around you is like I don't even want to go. Oh, that's the anointing. Anybody?